excited to share with you another Bible story found in our Bible. It is in Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31. It is entitled, The Rich Man and the Beggar. Before anything else, let us first pray. Bow our heads, close our eyes, and focus on Jesus. Dear Lord, thank you for today. We praise you, Lord. We pray that you guide us in our lesson. Help us understand your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we start our story, I have a question. What is the most important thing to you? And why? Color books and crayons. I want notebooks and to read, write, and also memorize. Um, 
most important thing is my family. Because I love them. Smile. It teaches us an important lesson in how we must treat others in life. It is a story of a very rich man and a poor beggar named Lazarus. You see, this rich man was very rich indeed. All his life, he had lots of money and enjoyed all the finest things life has to offer. He ate the most delicious food, wore fine jewelry of gold, silver, and diamonds. Even though purple dye was very expensive that time and worn only by royalty and very important people, the man didn't care and spent lots of money. So he could wear the fanciest purple clothes. He had a giant mansion, by far the biggest in town. He used it to throw big fancy dinners with lots of exotic food and held spectacular parties for all of his friends. Never did the rich man spare a thought before he spent any money. The rich man had everything he could have asked for in life. And everyone was very jealous of the luxury he enjoyed. But not everyone in the city was as fortunate as he was. Just outside the magnificent mansion owned by the rich man, there lived a poor beggar named Lazarus. His life was full of pain and suffering, and he had not a single possession to his name. All he wore were torn rags, as he had no money to buy clothes. Living in the street made him sick, and his body was covered in painful sores that never seemed to heal. He lived among the dogs who would come to him and lick his sores in his body. Whenever Lazarus did find food, street dogs would fight him for it, making him even hungrier and weaker than he already was. I am so hungry and I feel so weak. I have done everything I can do to try and live a good life. And yet here I am. If only someone would take pity on me and spare me just a scrap of food. And Lazarus lived and begged at the east gate just outside the mansion of the wealthy man. Lazarus would sit and watch all day as deliveries of food, jewelry, and treasures arrived at the rich man's house. Look at all these fine gifts that pass in and out of these homes. If only I could give and taste a bite of the fine food that they must be eating. Lazarus was so hungry that he dreamed of eating just a single crumb from the rich man's food. As he would leave to go, about his business in the city, the rich man would pass Lazarus at his front gate. Lazarus would see the wealth of the rich man and beg him even just for some crumbs. Please, sir, could you spare me just a scrap of food? I am very hungry. But the rich man did not care. Every day, he ignored the pleas of the poor Lazarus and continued to enjoy his life of luxury without care in the world. Even though they pass me every day, not one of these people from these fine houses even look at me. My hunger and suffering means nothing to them. Even we are neighbors and we are both children of God. One night, his life of poverty reached its end. Lazarus died and his spirit left his body. On the very same night, the rich man also happened to die. Finally, Lazarus' many years of suffering had come to an end. His spirit arrived at the gates of heaven and was greeted by Abraham himself to live in eternal bliss. Where am I? Who are you? Welcome, my son, as you have arrived at the gates of heaven. Abraham, I am one of your ancestors and first of God's chosen people. But as Lazarus was welcomed by Abraham at the gates of heaven, the rich man found himself in the pits of hell, surrounded by fire and suffering. The rich man watched 
as Lazarus entered the paradise and called out to his ancestor Abraham for help from the flames. Please, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Allow Lazarus to dip his finger and come down here and cool my tongue. These flames are so hot. I am here in agony and wish to cool down. But Abraham could not help the rich man. My son, do you not remember when you had the finest things in life? And poor Lazarus here had nothing at his name. He suffered each day while you lived in total luxury. He lived just outside your doorstep and you had plenty to spare. And did you ever stop to help the poor Lazarus through his suffering? No. You didn't, and so now you can never cross the great gulf between us. The gap between heaven and hell is too great, and you must live a good life to enjoy the kingdom of heaven. Once you reach the afterlife, the rich man realized how he had misused his life of luxury and began to fear for his family. Then please, Father Abraham, Send Lazarus to the house of my father. If Lazarus speaks to them, maybe he can convince them to change their ways and live more virtuous lives so they will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. But again, Abraham could not grant the rich man's request. Alas, my son, your father and brothers already have the word of Moses and all the other prophets before them to offer them this very message. And yet, they did not listen, but if they see Lazarus rise from the dead to give them this message, then they will be sure to listen and change their ways. But Abraham explained to the rich man, My son, if they did not listen to Moses, if they do not listen to the prophets, then one man rising from the dead will surely not make them listen. And so... Abraham left the rich man to face his fate and joined Lazarus again in the kingdom of heaven. And so that is the story of Lazarus and the rich man. In the afterlife, the rich man found himself with nothing but suffering while Lazarus enjoys an eternity of comfort and satisfaction. Even though the rich man had every privilege in life, he shared no respect for God or care for his fellow man, Lazarus. Once we die, we can no longer rely on the material goods in life to bring us comfort and happiness. Only by living a good life and caring for our fellow man can we make sure that we live forever in peace and kingdom of heaven. It is through the work of Jesus Christ that we are saved. So let us put Jesus in our hearts and care for the people around us. Hi guys, today I'm gonna walk you through how I get ready to start my day. But you know what? I think sometimes that it's good to mix things up a little bit. I don't like to do things always the same way, so I'm gonna try to do things in a different order and see if it will work. One thing that I do to get ready is to wear my shoes. I always seem to put them on with my socks first and then my shoe. Let's try it. So I put on first my shoe before I put on the socks. Let's see. You see, it's kind of difficult to put the shoe and then the socks and it looks so weird and oh, it didn't work that I do to get ready is I wash my hands. When I wash them, I usually put the soap first, then rinse them and dry them. That's boring. Maybe I can try to do it the other way around. I'll dry my hand first. And now, I'll rinse them. Then I'll put some soap. Oh, it's a bit slimy. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't work either. Else. 
Sometimes there are reasons why we do some things before we do something else. Like you put your socks on before your shoes because that makes the shoe fit or you rinse after you put soap so the soap will be washed away. So we might not always understand it, but there are good reasons for doing first things first. You know what? The Bible talks about putting first things first. Do you know what the Bible thinks should be the first thing? That's right. The first thing should always be God. See, Jesus told a lot of stories about people that thought they could arrange the order differently. They thought maybe they could put money first and they would figure out later that money is the most important thing. The riches could buy them happiness or into heaven or salvation. Well, they discovered they were wrong. They discovered that money doesn't buy everything. Some people thought that maybe if they just got enough pain or fortune or positions would buy them happiness. Well, it didn't work out. And Jesus continually said to come back to God that should be the first, the most important one in our lives. Nothing should come before that. You have to seek God first and then the other stuff will happen. God will be in our lives and He will help us. God loves us and we need to love others too. Hello kids, I'm Teacher Judah. Now we are going to the lesson application. Are you ready kids? The story of the rich man and Lazarus is one of the, those parables of Jesus that affirms worldly and earthly possessions are no benefits in the afterlife. That means people who have suffered on earth and wear obedience to God's word will receive their reward in heaven. If you are wealthy, it does mean that you are favored and blessed by God. Material prosperity is not an evidence of spiritual abundance. You see, kids, the rich man in this story had no compassion, love, and sympathy for the poor and has no reference to his relationship with God. We should not ignore our relationship with God pursuing riches and wealth. On the other hand, Lazarus was a beggar and also sick. It does not mean that God is angry and displeased with him. Maybe we have a, a strong relationship with God and his lack of physical possessions and help did not deter him from believing in God. God looks at a loving heart that has genuine faith in him. How you live your life here to on earth will determine how you will spend your eternity. This parable encourages us to do some self-examination in the Bible reminds us that we can merely listen to the word but we have to do what it says. Hello kids! Now we are going to the memory verse. Memory verse for today is Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Set your minds on things above not on earthly things. Again, Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things.
closing prayer. What we do when we pray, let us bow our head, close our eyes, and focus in Jesus. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Guide us and remind us, Lord, to put you first in our lives. Help us, Lord, to care and love others in the same way that you love us. Protect and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Classmates, di ko talaga makontak si ko. Busy ata siya sa school kasi nga face to face na ngayon. Classmates, tapos na po ang Sunday school. Pwede na po kayo makauwi. Balik po kayo next Sunday. to go home.